The scene on a perfect night for football in Columbia, South Carolina. And about two and a half hours ago, Gamecock Walk just off Garnet Way, across Bluff Road and into the locker rooms of williams Bryce Stadium. For Steve Spurrier, Mike Davis has been a mainstay in the South Carolina backfield with back-to-back -back games of over 100 yards on the ground. Vandy quarterback Austin Carter Samuels has had a great start to his final season and hopes his doors can pull a road upset tonight. It's the Commodores of Vanderbilt and the Gamecocks of South Carolina in a key SEC matchup next. Well, what do you got there? Harry Palmer. The SEC on ESPN from Columbia, South Carolina. Just about set for the Gamecocks and the Commodores. Before we kick, we check in with the third member of our team, Holly Rowe. Holly. Well, after the Georgia game, Jadavion Clowney in his post-game press conference said, I told the coaches, they've got to put me somewhere else. He is getting frustrated at teams running away from him. In the 64 plays that opponents have been running the football against South Carolina's defense, 52 of those have been away from Clowney's side. He actually had a meeting with his defensive coordinator, Lorenzo Ward, on Sunday. Ward has given him the freedom to change sides pre-snap. He said, just talk to Chas Sutton. If you think the play's run away from you, flip in. So watch for Jadavion Clowney to move a little bit more tonight. He said, I'm getting sick of running and chasing on the backside of those running plays. He wants to be more involved and make some plays for his team. And we were talking with Coach Spurrier, and he said what we've said all along, that play against Michigan in the bowl game has been shown so many times that everybody thinks he's going to make a play like that on every snap. Or at least every other snap. Or right? every other snap. Right. James Franklin's done a remarkable job with Vanderbilt in his third season. And they definitely feel that they not only can compete, there are no moral victories anymore for Vanderbilt. They expect to win every time out. And by the way, they are on a forced game winning streak in the SEC dating back to last year. 80 degrees, clear skies. It'll cool off a little bit more. South Carolina won the toss and deferred, so they'll be kicking away. Darius Sims and Torin Magaster back deep. Landon Ard to kick. And here we go at Williams Bryce to the corner. It's going to be fielded at about the three yard line. And he's not going to get to the corner. Dropped at about the 16 yard line. Austin Carter Samuels, who transferred from Wyoming a couple of years ago. Now the undisputed starter. And he's an interesting story, yeah. and he's a pretty darn good quarterback. I like him. I, I've watched him on film this year. He's got good poise. The ball's out of his hands quickly. Pretty good accuracy thrown in, and he can also move and scramble in the pocket. The guy we talked about, Jordan Matthews, is to the bottom of your screen. First snap from the 17. He's looking that way and goes that way and is complete out to the 21 yard line. Pick up a five as we take a look at our Chick fil A impact players. Jordan Matthews, we've already talked about him. He's got a catch already. Jerron Seymour gets a start in the backfield. On the other side, Chad Sutton makes some plays because they run away from Jadavian Cloudy. And Kadidrix Marcus is back in at safety. I think that should shore up the secondary a little bit tonight. Right away, we see something that Vanderbilt does a lot. They bring an extra offensive lineman in number 50, Jelts, and he's lined up in the tight end position. Carter Samuels on the move and a tough throw, incomplete intended for Matthews. Even though they would have loved to got the completion there, the good thing is they broke a tendency because coming into the game, when they brought that heavy look in, whether it's six linemen or seven, they have not thrown the football very much. It's been primarily run when they bring the extra linemen in. First time they show it, they throw a pass. Last year, Vandy was only three out of 15 on their third down conversions against South Carolina. South Carolina wasn't much better, in fact. It's a Car different quarterback. South Carolina said they wanted to try to double Matthews on third down. Here he is up here at the top on this first third down play. They've got three receivers that way on third down at five. Carter Samuel's got a man right in his face, and down he goes. Chaz Sutton with a sack. Not sure I understand this protection because this is just a defensive end, Chaz Sutton, that comes unblocked. There's nobody to account for him. It's not a blitz. It's a five-man rush, and Sutton comes untouched to the quarterback. That's just too easy. Yeah. 
So Taylor Hudson's going to have to punt. Three and out for Vanderbilt on their opening series. Bruce Ellington waits back near the 40-yard line. He's been kind of quiet so far this year due to injuries. He fields this one at the 46 on the fly. And Bruce Ellington with a stiff arm and goes out of bounds at the 42-yard line. So only a 38-yard punt and a 13-yard return. 38 yards and way too low. I mean, if you're going to kick an end-over-end -end punt like that, you better get it on the ground and bounce it out of bounds. Ellington was easily able to, to return that one. Connor Shaw, who's done a great job at home, where he is 11-0. He's had some trouble on the road, including last week in his home state of Georgia, even though he had a good game. But they came up short in that one, 41-30. Last year against Vanderbilt in an opener on a Thursday night, he played very courageously, hurt his shoulder in the second quarter, came back and finished the game, actually scored the game-winning touchdown on a run, had 92 yards rushing last year from the quarterback position. Mike Davis flushes out of that South Carolina backfield and goes out as a wide receiver to the left side, leaving Brandon Wilds with Connor Shaw in the backfield. And now got a stoppage in play before the first offensive snap. sure if the down markers in the first of all it's first down there we go that'll help you know you got one job to do that's what my wife always tells me you got one job to do and you mess it up so now we'll snap it at the 42 yard line again they put Davis and Wilds both back there in an overloaded pistol set and it will be Connor Shaw the keeper and a nice run, nine yards for Shaw. And South Carolina already deep in Vandy territories. We look at our Chick-fil-A impact players. Mike Davis, he's had 75-yard runs in both games so far this year. Nick Jones came on big time in the fourth quarter against Georgia last week. We'll see if they go more to him. Walker May, a good outside rusher. And Andre Howe, coaches for Vanderbilt, think he's one of the most underrated defensive backs in the SEC. Second down in the yard. Shaw. Easy throw and catch. Brandon Wilds, four yards in the first down. One of the problems that this Vanderbilt defense has had, even in the midst of their success here the last two years, has been quarterbacks that can run the football. They had a little trouble with Bo Wallace and Barry Brunetti from Ole Miss in the first game. You take a look at those four quarterbacks. Three of those teams they lost to last year, the quarterback, a big reason why. That Jeff Driscoll of Florida was a big one, 177 yards and three touchdowns. This guy can definitely run it's the best part of his game. Not that he doesn't throw the ball well. He's not the biggest guy in the world, but he's shifty and he has another nice game. And he makes good decisions. I think that's the biggest thing about him. He has a very high football IQ. Steve Spurrier trusts him with the ball in his hands, and he makes very strong decisions through the course of the football game, when to keep, when to give, when to throw it away, when to take a chance. Davis and McLaurin with him in the backfield on second down and a long four. Going to flare it out. Nice throw to Davis. He got it in stride, and Davis inside the 15 and down to the 12. Can't throw that pass no. any better. You mentioned the, the key phrase, in stride. When you throw to a running back, you don't want to make him slow down or reach back for the ball. You want to let him catch it quickly out in front and get his eyes ahead so he can make one guy miss in space. And that's exactly what Davis was able to do. Because the ball was well thrown, he could make the first guy miss. So first down of the Vandy 12-yard line. And Shaw keeps it. And only got back to the line of scrimmage. Kenny Ladler that time comes underneath from the secondary, made the stop. Now last year, I think the reason there was so much opening for Shaw to run is because of Marcus Lattimore. There was so much attention by the Vanderbilt defense on Lattimore that early in the game, that's when Shaw had some running lanes. And it appears that way in the ball game so far tonight. Mike Davis coming into the game, over 100 yards in both his first two starts, and Connor Shaw has some running room. Lattimore had 110 yards and a couple of touchdowns in that win last year. Shaw from the shotgun goes to the end zone. Touchdown! And it is Nick Jones. So one of our impact players makes an early impact. Nick Jones, 12-yard touchdown catch. You mentioned the throw on the swing pass to Davis. This throw might have been even better. 
because there were defenders around Nick Jones and Connor Shaw had to put it in one spot at the back of the end zone where only his guy had a shot to make a play. Elliott Fry, the freshman, in for the point after. Great start for South Carolina. They had a short field. Connor Shaw knew. Hit the road with Super. South Carolina's fans finding success brought to you by Expedia on the touchdown to Nick Jones. Well, Nick Jones is going to be lined up in the slot. He's right here, and you're going to see Connor Shaw. There's only one place for him to throw, and that's right there at the back of the end zone in between three defenders. You cannot put the ball in a better spot. Only your guy has a chance to make the catch. If it's incomplete, it's out of the back of the end zone. As it was, perfect throw results in a Carolina touchdown. Connor Shaw, three for three to three different receivers on that drive. The last 12 to number three, one of our impact players. There's his numbers on the year. Well, South Carolina early 7-0 advantage. Darius Sims and Torin McGaster again back deep. Last time they didn't get it out to the 20-yard line on the kick. This one should be returnable as well, right from the goal line. Sims across the 25. Nice return out to the 30. The ball came out. I think he was down. Well, there's still a mad scramble for it, but the linesman's got his foot down at the 30-yard line, a 30-yard return. Before Vandy snaps it, let's check in with Reese Davis. Reese? everything everybody expected it to be and maybe then some here's a toss to Seymour and John Seymour puts his head down and takes the tacklers out of bounds including Hampton <laughs> he kind of ran over there at the end seven yard game and he's going to go a little temple here well it, it's the it's the the way of the world in college football now and it's very smart Carter Samuels rolls. He might keep this. Fakes the pass. Easily gets the first down. And tiptoes out of bounds without getting hit. Steve Shoy, his tight end, was an intended receiver. And as soon as he saw his quarterback start to run, he became a blocker. And his block enabled Carter Samuel to get the first down. Scrambled out there for 11 yards. And so it's out across the 47-yard line. Brian Kimbrough comes into the Vanderbilt backfield. And now Carter Samuels. Will come out as a receiver with a Wildcat working here. And it didn't work at all. Another nice play by Kelsey Quarles that time on that defensive front. It's not the only guy on the defensive line, Jadavian Clowney, that can play. Right. Those other dudes can too. Well, we've already seen a, an early sack by Chaz Sutton. And Sutton and Quarles are the two guys that need to step up. If teams are going to run away from Jadavian Clowney on a consistent basis, then guys on the other side of that defense have to rise up and make plays. They have to make them pay for that philosophy. A second down and 10. Carter Samuels, middle screen, threw it too low. Seymour might have had a little room to work. The blockers were out in front, but it wasn't delivered to him on time or on target. And it's incomplete third down and long. And it was Kelsey Quarles again who got pressure. You know, you, you, you want to allow quick pressure on a screen, but that time Quarles was very close to Carter Samuels and forced a bad throw. Three wide outs for Connor Samuels, who was set up in the pistol, and I think will end up there eventually. He does. Third and ten. Play action. Pockets collapsing. And down he goes. Second sack of the night. Kelsey Quarles looks like he's come to play tonight. 
Did not play very well last week against Georgia. He's been very active. Comes on a little inside tackle stunt. And he gets the sack. Actually, good pressure by he and JT Surratt, both of them working on the inside there. So another punt coming up from Taylor Hudson. And you hear the chance of Bruce for Ellington. who had a nice return on the last one and got him in Vandy territory the last time he fielded a kick. And this one, he's going to backpedal and take it inside the 10 and got a level. Chris Moody. ESPN College Football Primetime is presented by Hampton Hotels. Feel the Hamptonality. And in part by Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. Boy, Packy wanted out of there. Yeah. He thought he was on a rotisserie or something inside the cage. And his game beat gone. <laughs> Darius Sims made a great play on the special teams to hit the punt returner Bruce Ellington back at the seven yard line. So South Carolina does not have good field position this time. They started their last drive there with the Vandy 42. Big difference. Mike Davis hit, bounces off. Nice second effort. Could have lost two, picked up a couple. Yeah, actually ducked under the tackle and was able to get it forward a little bit. This is an important defensive possession for Vanderbilt. One thing about this season, they're one and one, but they've been a very slow starting team. They've only scored three points in the first quarter of their two games. Now, they've been very good in the second quarter, 56 points in the second quarter, but they can't afford to get behind quickly and early in this one. Connor Shaw from his own goal line. On a seam route in and out of the hands. Of Rory Anderson is tight end. Nice hit defensively by Wake Forest to make him cough that football up. And you know what? It was a good hit and a clean hit. So much discussion about the new targeting enforcement of penalties this year. Watch, he goes low. He doesn't go up around the head or neck area. It's a good solid hit by Herring and jars the ball loose. So here's a huge third down for the Vandy defense to try to get the ball back. A third down at seven. Showing a three-man rush, going to drop eight into coverage here. Shaw, quick throw, complete, first down. Goes right back to his tight end. Big target against a zone coverage. And Rory does a nice job. He's in the slot, number 81. He just turns in between two defenders and shows the quarterback his numbers. And that's what you want him to do. You don't want him to drift. You don't want him to be sideways, show both numbers, and let the quarterback throw right in between them. Anderson's had a little bit of a hamstring problem, but is healthy now. He might be a lot bigger part of the offense tonight. Here's Bruce Ellington, also, likewise. Had a little injury earlier in the season, and he seems fresher tonight. Got about nine there. Nice block by Nick Jones, who caught the touchdown in the first Carolina possession. Whenever you throw those wide receiver screens, whether you throw it to the wide guy or the slot guy, the other wide receiver has to get the key block. Shaw's five out of six to five different receivers so far. Second down and short here, and they're going to throw for it. And it's Ellington again weaving his way through Vandy traffic. Herring, the outside linebacker, made the stop, but they'll move the sticks again. Well, when we saw South Carolina last week, Brad, offense wasn't their problem. They moved the ball well. They ran it well. Connor Shaw threw it well. They had one turnover, a very costly fumble by Connor Shaw on the Georgia 25-yard line that stopped a very promising drive and led to another score, and Georgia never looked back at that point. And that was at the end of a first-down run by yes. Shaw when he put it on the ground. So first and 10, South Carolina at their own 38-yard line. Shaw again to throw. He's going to air this one out, and... Is it caught? No, nope, oh. broken up. Lost it at the last minute. Andre Hull is the, uh, he is the best corner on this team. And watch him stay with the play. Now, he's beat by Shaq Rowland, but he doesn't give up. He keeps his hands in there, and he's fighting, and he knocks the ball out. you got to possess the ball all the way to the ground, and Hall does a nice job of fighting it out. He never maintains possession because Hall doesn't give up on the play. Bob Shoup, the defensive coordinator for the Commodores, said that he thinks that guy might be one of the more underrated players in the entire league, especially as a defensive back. 
Connor Shaw again, deep sideline, wide open. Oh, and in and out of the hands of Jeffrey. Shamir Jeffrey. We should have had that. Reading Connor Shaw's body language after the throw, it looks like there might have been some kind of a miscommunication on the route. It looks like Connor Shaw expected him to go a little bit deeper because that should have been an easy throw and catch. Hall was given a lot of ground out there that time, and that should have been a very easy completion for a first down. Instead, it's third and ten. Eighth play of the drive. We'll see if they can convert. Long yardage here from their own 38. They're going to flip it out of the backfield. Same play they did earlier. Mike Davis, same result. Davis inside the 40. He's still on his feet. And down to the 25-yard line. 37-yard play. Well, again, it has to be a perfect throw. The guy responsible for coverage is a linebacker coming from the inside. Jake Sealand, number 13, making his first start. Took a bad angle to Davis, but the accurate throw by Shaw enabled Davis to catch it without slowing down and get to the corner easily. So two huge plays by Davis as a receiver so far. The uh, Gamecocks started this drive of their own seven. Shaw this time is nailed, but he got the ball to Ellington. And Ellington's got another first down. Well, Connor Shaw looks sharp. I mean, he looks on his game. The ball is coming out correctly. It's accurate. He ran early in the first possession, but right now, as a thrower, he is on target. Knows pressure's coming, knows where his outlet receiver is, in this case, Ellington, and gets it to him for a positive game. He took a shot at the end of that release, but got it out there to the 11-yard line. This is the part of the field where he becomes a threat as a runner. In the red zone, quarterback runs, very effective for South Carolina. The left quarterback draws down here, too. 535 remaining in the quarter. South Carolina threatening again. Here comes the quarterback draw. Connor Shaw inside the five. Now around the three. You put two backs in the backfield and you let your quarterback run it, that's two extra blockers. No. So you outman the defense when your quarterback can run like that in the red zone. Very difficult to defend. Gamecocks can get a first down inside the two. Now I'm anxious to see if they do everything from the shotgun here or if they go under center some. Last week against Georgia, they had a goal line stand against them. And the fourth down play was an option out of the shotgun. Here they are on first, second down in the gun. Ellington looks a little confused about where to be lined up. Davis, touchdown, South Carolina. Ellington looked a little confused, but he did his job, and that is secure the backside. When you run the zone, you have to make sure you block the outside guy. Watch him cut off the backside and allow Davis to cut this all the way back the other way. All he has to do is get in front of his man, which he does, Herring, and Davis is able to get it into the end zone. Elliott Fry for the point after. All South Carolina here early. Vandy better have an answer for this or it's going to get out of hand for him on the road. 14 to nothing, South Carolina. Don't have much drives better than their last one. They started their own seven-yard line, went 93 yards and 11 plays in just under four minutes. And Mike Davis did a lot of the work on that drive as a receiver, as a runner, from four yards out for the touchdown. Landon Ard will tee it up. That's Darius Sims, the near man. And Thorne McGaster also back there with him. Sims, two yards deep. Out he comes across the 15, won't make the 20 again. Jadavian Clowney, we talked about the fact he was a little bit frustrated last week by where he played, and this was his comment in that press conference Holly talked about in the pregame. 
It's very frustrating. I told Coach, man, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta pick me somewhere else, you know. In the middle, if you want to, I don't know, somewhere I can make some plays, help my team, put us in position win games. But really, they just ran the ball away from me, took me out of the game tonight. Let's see where he lines up. He's gonna line up in his regular spot, yeah. and that's where he's been all night tonight. But Quarles and Sutton have played pretty well so far in the early possessions for South Carolina. Kimbrough in the backfield with Carter Samuels. It comes up fire a little bit behind Matthews as intended receiver incomplete. And here's part of why it's frustrating for Jadavion Clown is because as we see a little tempo now from Vanderbilt, teams are more and more going to that. It forces you to line up quickly. On the ground. Kimbrough found a little bit of running room this time out to the 26. It, it not only forces the defense to line up quickly and show you where a guy like Clowney is, but it also, a lot of teams line up quickly, but they don't necessarily snap it quickly. They line up, they see where the defense is, they look to the sideline, and then they check the play at the line of scrimmage. And it's very easy to see where he is and then call plays that go away from him. Now, this is where he needs to make his money on third down when he has a chance to rush the passer. Third down at three. There he comes around the corner, and the quarterback, Carter Samuels, knows that, but he's going to be short by about two feet of the first down. Carol Dixon got some inside pressure. The guy working against Jadavian Clowney tonight, number 67, Wesley Johnson, is their best offensive lineman. This is his 41st consecutive start. He's played four different positions. Does a nice job just riding Clowney up the field, knowing that the quarterback is running back inside on that play. If he plays every game this year, he'll break the Vanderbilt record for most career starts. He's going to be a good player at the next level because of what you said. He can play a lot of different spots. Victor Hampton back as a punt returner this time. Takes a couple steps back and then takes two more steps back. Nice hustle down there by the Vandy special teams. Herring made the stop. A loss of four after a 44-yard kick. We thought we'd see Dylan Thompson. Apparently, we will when we come back. Gamecocks with a two-touchdown lead as you look at the South Carolina defensive front there. Jadavian Clowney, over the first couple weeks, people have wondered if he takes plays off and doesn't go hard all the time. He went hard on three plays in a row, and then watch him on fourth down go after the punt. I'm surprised he's even in there on the punt team. Punt return team, I should say, but he goes hard after that. I just think he plays a lot harder than people give him credit for, but again, people expect big plays all the time. Here's Brandon Wilds. They faked the fly sweep and went back to the left side for no gain. We're going to get a gain here from Reese Davis. Reese, what do you got? Keep us posted. Reese, Dylan Thompson, and that quarterback for South Carolina. And he comes up with a quick slant to the tight end, Anderson, and he's got a first down. Now, th this is not a surprise for us. Steve told us yesterday that he wanted to play Dylan, that he thought he deserved to play some. It certainly doesn't have anything to do with Connor Shaw being right. off. He told us last week we might see him too, but he said Connor's home state, yep. Flowery Branch, Georgia, wanted to give him every opportunity in Athens to try to win that game. And he told us, yeah, I think you'll see Dylan. We're going to throw him in there sometime in the first quarter. And here he is in the first quarter, and he comes up swinging it, complete to Demir Bird. And he's got another first down. Now, Dylan Thompson doesn't offer the same dual threat capabilities of Connor Shaw, but he can make some throws that Connor Shaw may not make as easily. Nice block out there by the other wideout to free him for the first down. And so South Carolina sits right at the midfield strike with a 14 0 lead. Play action. Thompson fires complete wide open as Shaq Rowland first down inside the 35. Pick up of 17 more. There's evidence right there of his arm strength from the far hash throwing the out to the wide side of the field. This is a long throw. And the ball didn't have a whole lot of air under it. Nice shot to the outside to Rowland. And moves the chain. Down to the 33 yard line. First and 10. High snap. Gets it to Brandon Wilds. Weaving his way. Nice run. Didn't look like he was going to get much. But he found a little crease in there and picked up seven. 
Vanderbilt is trying to keep their defensive line fresh. They're rotating four at a time. Right now, they bring their starters back in. They I don't didn't get think they got up. their guys out. I don't think they got everybody off the field. Nope. I don't see a flag, but there was at least one person that wasn't on the sideline. Now I do see a flag on the far side at about the 28-yard line. Yeah, they've been trying to substitute all four guys at the same time. And that time, the guys got on the field in time, but not off. Pretty good job by Dylan Thompson getting the ball snapped before they had left the field. Matt Laffler is our referee. Here's the call. First penalty of the game. Offside on the defense. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is first down. Yeah, I guess they could have called anything there. <laughs> it was offside. There was too many white jerseys out there. A lot of things happening. At any rate, it moves it in the red zone again at the 17-yard line, where it's first and 10 for South Carolina. Wouldn't be surprised to see Dylan Thompson attack the end zone right here. He's looking that way. Comes short across the middle to his safety valve. Wilds, and he's got a first and goal. Good decision. He was looking to Nick Jones, who was running a corner route, which would have been a touchdown. He didn't like what he saw there, and does the smart thing, drop, drops it underneath to Wilds. See, he's looking left. He's looking for Jones. Doesn't like it. Dump it off and let Wilds get what he can get. What he got was down just outside the three-yard line. Thompson's five for five throwing the football. First and goal, South Carolina. Ellington in motion and now sets up the same spot he was earlier. And now Dylan Thompson on the ground shows that he can run like Connor Shaw, at least for three yards. Yes. <laughs> Touchdown. job on the back side by Bruce Ellington the wide receiver who's responsible for the end of the line he reads it Dylan Thompson read it kept it got it in the end zone South Carolina like a machine here for the first 14 and a half minutes of this game Elliot Fry point after is good better Gamecocks have won 11 games in each of the last two years that has never happened before and Steve Spurrier Pretty proud of that. He has some mementos that some fans have given him that he's got up in his office stating that very case. 11 wins back to back seasons. Pretty darn good. Sims from the one yard line. This time he's got a little bit of room to work. And the kicker's going to have to help cutting down. 34-yard return as we check in with Holly. Well, Todd, you were talking about Jadavion Clowney playing hard on their last defensive series. He is really battling through this right foot soreness. He arrived at the stadium tonight wearing a walking boot. Somebody told us they saw him on campus in it this week. His foot got stepped on in practice, according to the coaches, last week. He continues to wince on the sideline and keeps telling those guys, man, this is really hurting. He's fighting through it, and the problem is in the stance he gets down in, the right foot is that push-off foot that he's getting that motor from. He's fighting through it. Thanks, Holly. First down. And it's a wildcat for Kimbrough here. Trying to follow his blockers. Even has his hands on his blockers. Backside picks up four. Kimbrough, a sophomore out of Memphis. Not the biggest guy in the world. 5'8", 185 pounds. James Franklin, we talked about slow starts they started slow tonight they have scored at least 21 points in the second quarter in their last four games so we open the second quarter Vandy in an eye backfield and decent game for Kimbrough Marcus Roberts the outside linebacker made the stop after a pickup of three they pretty much have to have this third down time. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sitting here thinking the same thing. Critical play right now for Vanderbilt. Carter Samuels has got to get it done. Throws out wide side. Matthews, as Todd said, they got to get it in his hands, and he's got a first down and into South Carolina territory. 47-yard line. They run their wide receiver screen a little bit different than most people. Most people throw it to the slot guy, and the outside receiver is the blocker. They like to put Matthews out wide, throw the ball to him, and let the slot receiver become the key blocker. They've had a lot of success this season with that little play. 
So the Commodores first trip into Gamecock territory just inside the 47 yard line. Carter Samuels in the gun. Scans the field, comes across the middle into some tight coverage, and it's incomplete. Intended for Shoy, the tight end. Kind of a dangerous throw. There was two guys on number 81. He tried to tuck it in there. They'll bring up second down and 10. Now it's second down and 10. They take Shoy out, and they bring in the extra lineman, Andrew Jelks, number 50, who they'll line up in the tight end position. And again, this has been a heavy run formation for them. So South Carolina's strategy against this, kind of load the box, blitz it, anticipating run more than pass. They give it off to Kimbrough. He stood up by Jadavia Clowney, and then he gets help from his friends. Got about three right, yards out of it. And Franklin said, come on, let's go. And this time they run Jadavia's way. You see their best lineman working on him. Has a hold of the jersey. <laughs> you know, sometimes you got to hold Superman. Look out. Avoided a sack from Chaz Sutton. Good car to Samuels. And then landed on his backside. Well, Sutton chased the quarterback, and Clowney played the screen. Watch Jadavian read it and go out on the screen. And Sutton went after the quarterback. Both defensive ends lined up on the same side that time, and both of them did their job beautifully. So they did convert one third down, but now they find themselves in a fourth down and have to punt again. Fourth down and seven. Hudson, knuckleball kick. This one's going to be a good one, though. It'll go out around the seven or eight yard line. So for the second time tonight, South Carolina be inside their own 10. The last time they went 93 yards for a touchdown. Thirteen twenty-six remaining till halftime. Time for our Half trivia question. In the history of the Associated Press Bowl since 1936, Commodores have only defeated two ranked teams in true road games. Who are they? I'll give you some time on that one. Second time tonight, South Carolina will be inside its own 10 yard line to start a drive. They started at the seven earlier and capped off a 93 yard march in 11 plays. This time they'll be at the eight. And it'll be Connor Shaw coming back in at quarterback. Yeah, that drive, they went 93 yards. They converted a huge third down play. Pass from Connor Shaw to the tight end, Rory Anderson, that really got him out of there and got him going. 13 out of 16 between the two quarterbacks so far in the first half. And Shaw rolls into his own end zone. Loads it up and now pulls it down. Wanted to throw, but he gets what he can, which is about four yards before Kyle Westman, uh, Westman excuse me, brings him down. And a good decision. They, they had a deep route to Demir Bird, who's the fastest of the wide receivers. Vanderbilt didn't bite on it. And he made the solid decision to just become a runner and turn it into a five-yard game. Mike Davis checks back in. Ellington, the slot man. Anderson, the tight end, with three receivers to the near side for Shaw on second down and five. Blitz coming. Shaw lobs a middle screen to Davis, and he's got room to work. Mike Davis all the way out to the 30 yard line. 18 yards. Looked like almost a perfect play right there. Yeah. Really nice job by the tight end, Rory Anderson, number 81, who was lined up in the slot. He's going to come right into the middle and get a key block on the linebacker, 13. Watch that. There's the key block, and Mike Davis did a nice job of reading the blocks and getting the ball upfield. And now it's Ellington on a slip screen on the outside. He only got a couple. Even Clark holding on for real life over there on the corner. For the last four or five years, Vanderbilt has played very competitively against South Carolina. And South Carolina has not scored a lot of points against them. But tonight, they don't seem to have any answers for Carolina's offense. They have got it going on, the run in the pass, both quarterbacks making good decisions, and they really have this Vanderbilt defense off balance. Second down at seven. From the 33, Connor Shaw. Loads and fires, deep sideline, incomplete, intended for Anderson. 
and he wanted Anderson to get a little closer to that sideline and try to hit him on the back shoulder incomplete. So brings up third down and long. And that hasn't been a problem so far for South Carolina tonight. Not yet. I think if you're Bob Shoup, defensive coordinator, you got to go after Connor Shaw here. Even though he's a threat to run, I don't think you want to play zone defense because he's been on with his accuracy and decision making. I think you go after him. Wilds is behind Shaw in the pistol set. Shaq Rowland and Ellington one way. Anderson and Nick Jones the other. Shaw is going to air it out long for Ellington over the shoulder catch. Perfectly thrown. And he beats the freshman Darius Sims all the way down to the 30-yard line. See, they like to run that fade route from the slot because that gives them a lot of room to throw over the outside shoulder. Got a lot of space between that route and the sideline. Steve always loved that route in Florida with his quarterback and wide receivers. Brought that same concept here to South Carolina and can't throw it much better than that. Second time Shaw's thrown a 37-yard completion. That one was a long ball. The other one was to Mike Davis on the swing pass. And it's got him down inside the 30 as they mark it at the 28. Shaw again over the middle. And this is Wilds near the 22 for number 22. Jake Seal the middle linebacker made the stop. Sealing in there because Chase Garnum, the normal middle linebacker, has a right leg injury. He's been in a cast this week. So Sealand, who's a young guy, a Tucker Georgia good player, but doesn't have the kind of experience they had from the other guy. And there he is. I'm not quite sure when he's going to be back. Flags down. Oh, illegal substitution on the offense. 12 men in the huddle. Five yard penalty. Second down. First penalty against yeah. the game counts. No They're moving the ball well enough with 11. They don't need 12. <laughs> That's for sure. So the clock stopped 10 43. And again, Connor Shaw has been nearly perfect. He's had a couple of passes that could have been caught. Yeah. I mean, between he and Dylan Thompson. Ball hasn't touched the ground very often. Well, and the problem for Vanderbilt please is. Please reset the game clock to 10:55 on the game clock, please. 10:55 on the game clock. They've not been able to make him uncomfortable at all. They haven't got enough pressure on him to, to make him uncomfortable in the pocket or to make some bad decisions, and so his accuracy has been on point. Mike Davis flushes out of the backfield, up as a wide receiver on the right, and now Shaw's going to take off, inside run. Connor Shaw, a pretty good game before Walker May wrapped up his ankles. And it brings up third down. Third down at seven. They've been in this situation earlier in this drive. They need to get down to the 18-yard line for a first down. South Carolina, four and a half minutes more time of possession, but they... They've used that possession time beautifully. 283 yards already. Third down at seven. Little stunt on the front line for Vandy. Didn't matter. Perfect throw. Bruce Ellington touchdown. Twenty-six yard strike. Shaw to Ellington this time. Quarterback feeling it when he feels he can throw a ball in between two tight defenders. The corner and the safety had great coverage on Ellington, but the ball goes right between the two white shirts. That is a quarterback who's feeling pretty good tonight. Extra point is good. ESPN College Football Primetime, brought to you by the all-new Sierra, designed and engineered by GMC. That's professional grade. And Aflac, official partner of the Heisman Trophy. As the fountain at five points. Vandy wishes Carolina only had five points. 28 to nothing. Well, the execution level for South Carolina has been beautiful. Now, Darius Sims is going to come on a blitz, but I want you to watch. Look at the eyes right here of Wilds. He is seeing the blitz. That's his responsibility to move across the formation and pick it up. Connor Shaw knows he has a linebacker running underneath the coverage. 
doesn't matter, sticks it right in between two defenders, but the execution of South Carolina has been spectacular. Ellington career high in receptions. We expected him to be a big part of their offense with some knick-knack injuries earlier he hadn't been. And a second ago, the kickoff down to Sims around the five. And again, barely gets to the 20-yard line. And we've got a Wake Forest player down Harding Harper, I think, a backup middle linebacker. If I said Wake Forest, I apologize. Vanderbilt. So we'll check on Harding Harper with just under 10 minutes to go when we come back. Earn more free nights when you join Wyndham Rewards. More super. Montgomery, Alabama. On the kickoff return team, he just sort of took a weird step on his own. I don't think he was hit by anybody. They're working on his left knee right now. So they've already are thin at the middle linebacker position, and it just got thinner. Commodores on offense in the Wildcat. And this time, it works pretty well for Jerron Seymour, who picked up eight. And we check in with Reese Davis. Reese. backfield Carter Samuels wants to throw he's flushed out of the pocket got away from the first guy and the second not the third go lightly got him third sack of the night for South Carolina a lot of substitutes in on the first two plays for South Carolina they get good pressure there excellent coverage downfield Carter Samuels had enough time to throw couldn't find anybody open, had to reload. And as you mentioned, got away from the first two would-be tacklers, but not go lightly. So now you've got third down and 12. And only one third down conversion for Vanderbilt so far tonight. Not much of a play fake. Carter Samuels is going to try to get it on his own, and he won't. Jimmy Legree made the stop, and it's punting time again for the Commodores. Last week in Athens, this South Carolina defense gave up 537 yards. It was the most in a game since 2007 when they gave up 651 to Arkansas. A much different looking defense tonight. I mean, they are on point, and as Steve Spurrier told us, Vanderbilt only 48 yards of offense, and he said, hey, we just got to get them lined up faster and then just go play. <laughs> and they have third three and out for Vanderbilt now, and they've got a punt again. Hudson's kick. Ooh, a dandy. Over the shoulder catch attempted by Ellington. He, he dropped it. it, and now he picks it up at the two. Starting to come the other way and dropped. And it sims again on the punt return team, and we might have a flag before this plays over. The end of the play, and it's still going on. It's going to go against Vanderbilt, I'm pretty sure. Well, now we've got one on both teams, so not very smart by either player. Let's see if we have one or two. The first one was clearly on Vanderbilt. It would have hurt there. You know, they had him pinned down inside the 10 again, but it was going to bring it out. But then I think the second flag was against South Carolina. After the play, unsportsmanlike conducts against each team. A number 28 white and number three on the South Carolina. If I rule those penalties offset, first down. Timeout. So a 75-yard punt. Penalties going either way. Offset the situation. And Ellington. Dropped right there. All Gamecocks right now. 28 to nothing. 
All South Carolina right now. Earlier we asked you in the history of the AP poll and our Athlete trivia question, the Commodores have only defeated two ranked teams in true road games. Who are they? Georgia in 2006 and in the following year, South Carolina in 2007. Right now, Vanderbilt's in a load of trouble here. And it doesn't matter where South Carolina starts their offensive drives, at least so far it hasn't, but this time Mike Davis has stopped for only a one-yard game by Kenny Ladler. And Dylan Thomas in for another possession. Right now, South Carolina is on pace for 900 yards of offense. But <laughs> <laughs> they've had 34 plays, no negative yardage, only six plays with no gain, four incompletions. It's been uh, almost perfect. Yep. Well, Steve was so disappointed because in both of the first two games, they didn't run more than 60 plays. And here comes Dylan Thompson running at quarterback. He's already scored on the ground tonight, and he almost got a first down there. I just think it's amazing when you consider what Steve Spurrier's done here. I mean, we all know the success he had at Florida, but he literally changed the culture here in Columbia as well. First down, Westman makes the stop. Uh, it used to be when you talked about the power in the SEC East, it was Tennessee and Florida, and then it was Tennessee, Florida, and Georgia, and now it's Georgia, Florida, and South Carolina. Tennessee's fighting to get back into fray. Of course, Vanderbilt has made improvements. Kentucky with a new coach and Mark Stoops. Missouri in the East now, but South Carolina, a legitimate power in the East. Here's a throw out, completes. Don Smith, and he's got about nine yards. Holly? Well, I checked with the Columbia Chamber of Commerce because there's just more of a buzz here in downtown with businesses, people coming into town. And they said the university have done a study that there is about a $6 million boost every time they have a home game here in the community. Winning football equals better business, more excitement, and Steve Spurrier has certainly brought that here to Columbia. Steve was telling us that a few years ago when he first got here, they were playing number two Auburn at the time. As Davis rips off another first down run out across the 35 yard line. As Steve was telling us, he said they were playing number two Auburn and they lost 24 to 17, even though they were throwing, trying to get a touchdown in the final play. And when they went to the locker room, all the fans here at Williams Price were clapping. And he got on his radio show and said, Please don't ever do that again. We're not into moral victories. We want to build a program. And obviously, he's built one where he's the winningest coach in two different schools, Florida and here. And only Bear Bryant can make that claim. They keep it on the ground with Davis off the right tackle again. And right now they're just gashing the Commodores defense. Well, Holly mentioned the economic impact. I'll tell you another study that would be interesting that I think is equally true. Winning football means more contributions of alumni to your university and more applications of students that want to go to school at your university. Right. It, it, it has a powerful effect on a whole community and a university. They talked about what Johnny Manziel did as far as enrollment at Texas A&M, and same can be said about kids here in Columbia. Incomplete pass this time. South Carolina has an enrollment of over 31,000. And of course, Vanderbilt, only around 6,800. This place has been packed pretty much every time they played as they have won four straight against Vanderbilt. As I mentioned earlier, 11 wins in each of the last two years, and their home winning streak is third longest. And Georgia got that 13 by beating South Carolina between the hedges last week. So three wide outs for Thompson on a third and five. They're going to run some option here. And he's going to keep it, and he's going to get the first down. Yeah. He must not have liked what I said about him not being the, the same dual threat guy that Connor Shaw. I think that option is just an automatic play against a certain defensive look. It's not determined that he's going to keep it or pitch it, but it's wide open. And when in doubt, don't pitch it out. Good decision and got the first down easily. So the junior out of Boiling Springs, South Carolina, has had three big runs tonight, one for a touchdown. And now the ninth play of the drive, and they're back in Vanderbilt territory. This one's batted up in the air. He caught his own tipped ball. 
So he's got to attempt a completion yeah, to well, himself. It would have been second and ten on an incompletion, <laughs> and it's second and ten on a completion. So blitz. Andre Hall got a hand on the football. And at that point, Thompson has the decision either catch or just bat it down to the ground. It's second and ten virtually either way. They actually lost a little bit, and that would be the first negative play of the night. Now they go positive play, and it's intercepted. There's a negative play, and a nice play by Stephen Clark. Interception and a run down the sideline, still on his feet. Clark bouncing off, guys. Inside the 20, Clark, he's all the way down to the one-yard line. What a run back on the interception. And there goes the visor. This is a beautiful play by Stephen Clark because he left his man. Watch Stephen Clark leave the outside receiver and peel back for Ellington. He felt the throw coming underneath. He left his man and went and picked the ball off in front of Ellington and then made a nifty run back after the interception. That was a 69-yard return down to the South Carolina one-yard line. A nice blocking from his teammates and almost scored wild saved the touchdown and slow to go off the field Marshall one of the captains Javon Marshall senior safety this is where Vanderbilt not only brings in a sixth offensive lineman but a seventh they bring in their super jumbo lineup they bring in Jelks number 50 and also Spencer Pulley and they go with a Wildcat. Seymour will take the snap, and he'll score standing up. So they really take advantage of the turnover in a hurry. One play, one yard, one touchdown. That extra lineman they bring in, Jelks, gets a nice block. Watch number 50 on the end of the line as the tight end seals the linebacker. The fullback, Fitz Lassing, 38, does a nice job and an easy touchdown, and they had to capitalize at some point. And they did right there. Barry Spear in for the point after. And the extra point up and good. So Vanderbilt was in dire need of making a big play. And they finally got one. 3.38 remaining in the half. You like a good burger, right? I, I wish I'd have gone with you because that looks like it's one of the best I've ever seen. Gary Spear to kick. And Sean Carson back deep. At the goal line, dropped the ball. Picked it up on one hop. And he's going to get leveled at about the 12-yard line. Just wanted to say one thing to you, partner. Yeah. Um, you got a little bit something right about there. Yeah, you know, I know. You need a napkin? <laughs> I know. I didn't realize that, you know. They, they caught me. My man Dave Earnhardt, the camera guy, didn't get off me yeah. soon enough. You I, know? I, I didn't know how you got your mouth around that thing. Let's be honest. It, I'm a professional. You are you know, a professional. I'm a professional. That's what I do. But, I mean, hey, it was another great place. Yep. Pauly's front porch. Amanda Steen was the manager there, took care of us. And uh, we're off to a rousing start. Yep. You know, it's it's fun to have the segment back again this year. Remember, he is a professional. Don't try that at <laughs> That's home. That's right. Yeah. Don't try it at home. And Todd's Taste of the Town book is out. He was signing books outside the stadium here today. Connor Shaw back in the quarterback at the 13-yard line. Now with a 28 to 7 ball game. And he gives it to number 28. And Mike Davis, boy, he's had some tough runs. He's had long runs both of the first two weeks, a 75-yard touchdown, and then another 75-yard run we saw last week. And he gets some tough yardage as well. 5'9", senior from Lithonia, Georgia. His brother, James, played at Clemson. Clemson's number two all-time leading rusher, in fact. And he's the first running back in South Carolina history to have back-to-back -back games with 75-yard runs. Yeah, and, and I don't think Mike Davis is going to make people around here forget about Marcus Lattimore. No. Nope. But he's making the sting of losing Lattimore a lot less painful because he has really played well here early in the season and played well in substitution last year. And George Rogers, the Heisman Trophy winner in 80. He and Jadavian Clowney, the official, took a bad spill over there by the first down marker. Hopefully he's okay. Herring made the stop on Shaq Rowland. And... Wait 
to see if our official is going to be all right. The trainers from both teams come flying out there. He was right at the first down stick and trying to get out of the yeah. way and backpedaling. And well, we had the official and we had the chain game. Right. They couldn't get that out of the way. He couldn't get out of the way. I think he tripped over that and he got hit. Hope he's okay. Not only taking one in the knees, but also kind of banging his head on the turf when he hit. We'll check on our official for sure when we come back. Water damage can cost you thousands. And, and he'll get a nice ovation as they take him off on the cart here. Normally you don't get a good ovation if you're an official. <laughs> Well, we're going to wish him the best and hope he feels better later or better quickly. Meanwhile, the alternate takes the field. They bring out the chains. To mark the ball, and apparently it's going to be short of the first down by about the length of the football. So that means third down. The good thing is, when something happens to you, there's almost no better place to be other than a hospital than a football stadium. Right. And the Gamecocks will take the field again. Now it's third down and about a foot. With a big lead, with a little over two and a half to go in the half. Connor Shaw will come up under center. As Todd said, in short yardage last week against Georgia, they couldn't do this. This time they do. And if they'd have done that last week, they might have scored a touchdown. Yeah, they might have. It was a two-score game at that point, and Steve Spurrier elected to go for the touchdown on fourth and one. Not sure if he would get that close again, and they were stopped. And South Carolina, Georgia was able to run out the clock then from that point on. South Carolina is perfect on third down tonight. Seven for seven. A little bit of a high snap, but he gets the handoff, uh, fakes the handoff to Davis, keeps it himself. And not much of a game. This is the play we were talking about last week. They got down in there, first started with pressure, and Connor Shaw had to run. Then a design quarterback draw, which they love in the red zone. And Davis comes up about a yard shy. Yep. Here's the option we were talking about. That one didn't have a chance either. We talked to Steve about that and you know taking that ball off the line of scrimmage with the shotgun. He said, yeah, we're going to change that. Wow, not a nice run by Davis. That had a little bit of everything. Looked like he was going to lose about three. Spin move, broken tackle, pick up eight. Well, he runs hard, you know, and they, and they substitute Wilds enough for him that they keep both these guys fresh. And they both run with power and strength. See if they can stay perfect on third down. Yep. And then some. Out to the 41-yard line. Now obviously, you have some fatigue working with this Vanderbilt defense. This is a lot of offensive plays in the first half that they've been out there. Mike Davis running with low center of gravity, got good pad level, and hard to tackle. Under a minute to go in the half. Connor Shaw deep in the middle, wide open. Ball is out. Caught and then recovered. Beard, I mean, rather, Nick Jones made the catch. It came flying out, and... Ellington covers it. Well, they may end up taking a look at this to see if it's a completion. I think it was. Secures it. Then he got hit. It's close. Yeah, they're going to take a look at it. And Connor Shaw tried to get a snap before the replay, but they stopped play there. But the point is, Connor Shaw has been right on point throwing the football. The only thing that Nick Jones the did there. play is under further review. The only thing that Nick Jones did there was he took his eyes off the ball at the last minute 
to see where Ladler was, the safety, coming at him. Watch. Took his eyes off the football at the last minute, and that might have been what prevented him from securing the catch. Well, the replay officials, the only guy I didn't mention a little bit earlier, John Bibles, the replay official tonight. There's another angle. And the ball comes squirting out of there. It was ruled a catch on the field. So it has to be indisputable evidence to overturn that call. Catch and a fumble recovered by South Carolina. If it's a catch and it stays, Connor Shaw's 15 out of 19 with two drop passes. Yes. It looked like to me that he did catch the football, but he didn't tuck it away. He catched, he caught it and kept it out away from his body, and Ladler was able to get a, his shoulder pad on the football. But we'll see what they call. With the exception of the interception thrown by Dylan Thompson that Vanderbilt took all the way down to the one-yard line, it's been South Carolina with a near-perfect performance on both sides of the ball, just that one miscue. They ran 59 offensive plays in the opener against North Carolina, 61 plays last week in the loss in Athens to Georgia. So far in the first half, 50 plays. So uh, they're well on their way to their most productive offensive game by far. The truck tells me Steve Landis is the replay official tonight, not John Bible. He's filling in for John. So we await what Steve's got to say and what Matt will tell us, our referee. Steve's had a pretty good night with the exception of that one drop kick of the visor on the <laughs> interception. And this one's taken a while. I wonder if he gets when he gets grass stained on the visor if he if he has to wear a new one the next week. Or maybe even at halftime if he's got another one in there for him. Backup visor? Yeah. Yeah. His offense looks sharp, that's for sure. That's why we've got a big smile on both quarterbacks' face, faces. Both Shaw and Thompson have been sharp tonight through the air and on the ground, including Dylan Thompson with the touchdown run. Well, this one is close enough that it's taking a long time. South Carolina just under 400 yards of offense in the first half. And that's uh, usually what you get for a game, much less a half. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you, Steve. I just made the same gesture right. up here to Todd. Let's go. <laughs> What's taking so long? But part of his thing is, you know, go ahead and make the call. I just don't want you to slow down the tempo or the rhythm of our offense because right now we're heading towards another score whether we get this play or not. There's about six minutes of our life we'll never get back. After further review, it was an incomplete pass. It will be second and ten on the 40-yard line. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock to 51 seconds, please. 51 seconds. So incomplete pass. And it goes back to 51 seconds. Beautiful throw. Nice play by Ladler getting in there and making contact with the football. And Nick Jones just not able to secure it. And as Todd said, you talk about slowing momentum down. Gamecocks offense has been standing over on the sideline for that entire time trying to keep that pace going that they had going. They're going to try to score one more time. They've got 50 seconds and all three timeouts. Shaw runs up the middle. He'll be dragged down by Baron Dixon. Only got a couple of yards, so it's going to be third down and eight. Pretty athletic play by Baron Dixon because... Connor Shaw usually able to slip away from plays like that. Timeout, Vanderbilt. 
That's the first charge timeout half. So Vandy takes a timeout. Yeah. With 39 seconds, they'd like to get the ball back. But the way the third down conversions have been That's going for South Carolina, timeout. they might never see it no matter how many timeouts they might call. One of the sport's greatest rivalries continues with a pivotal matchup. Yankees trying to keep their wild card hopes alive. They'll take on the East leading Red Sox. Yankees and Red Sox tomorrow night, 8 o'clock on ESPN and live on Watch ESPN. That's some pretty good company. Buck Holtz yeah. is joining there. Tell you what, it's, uh, it's an exciting American League wild card race right now. You were into it last night at dinner, man. My, my Cleveland Indians are uh, <laughs> they're right there in the thick of things. Have a nice schedule the rest of the way out. Hopefully we can see him uh, make it in there. Well, perfect on third down to this point. Can Connor Shaw pick up another one? Third down and a long eight. Three wide outs to his right. He looks that way. Now comes back and going deep in the middle and overshot Shaq Rowland. And there's the first third down attempt. That is not a completion for Shaw. So the timeout by Vandy was good because they're going to force the Gamecocks to kick first time tonight. Jonathan Krause, who's a fine punt returner, waiting back at the 15-yard line on the kick from Tyler Hall. Kicks it to the far side, trying to keep it out of... The returner's hands, and he put it in a great spot. And Sidney Rhodes is in a great spot. 43-yard punt and a perfect hit to make the stop on special teams. Speaking of perfect, not quite perfect, but very close, Todd. He's been very sharp. You know, he, he always has been a guy who makes good decisions. There's a toughness about him. He doesn't mind running the football. But tonight, what's really stood out is the accuracy throwing the football. He has been right on point, whether he's throwing down the field, swing passes to Mike Davis. He has had a beautiful first half. Carter Samuels in the shotgun. Looks left, comes back on the slant, and they finally get it to the big play guy, Jordan Matthews. And Matthews has it across the 45 to the 46, 30-yard pickup. They've got two timeouts left. They move the sticks with 21 seconds remaining. They don't have the stick set yet, but they're going to snap it. Carter Samuels again, flushed out of the pocket. Throws near side and tiptoeing out of bounds is Matthews again. So two quick throws, but they're all SEC wide receiver. Really enjoyed visiting with him yesterday. Coming out of high school, he had no scholarship offers. Madison Academy in Alabama, small school. And then there was a late decommit at Vanderbilt and they offered him a scholarship and he's become one of the outstanding receivers in this league and this one's caught by Jonathan Kraus out of bounds with five seconds left 10 yard pickup they've got one of the better kickers in the country and let's see if they give him a shot they will Gary Spear time is out. on the Groza list it was a year ago 30 second timeout. All SEC performer last year. What are you looking at here? A 57 yard kick? He had a school record 20 yard, uh, 20 field goals made out of 24 attempts. And it's going to be about 54. 54. Boy, if they get three out of this, that would be huge. Yeah. Considering it looked like South Carolina was going to score more points before halftime, but then on the review, that Jones. What we thought was a completion was taken out. Quarterback comparison tonight. Well, it hasn't been a great night for Austin Carter Samuels, but he hasn't been on the yeah. field very long. No, and, and really they've been a little bit absent of the running game, which they have not had much of this entire season so far. Coming into the ball game, only averaging... 150 yards a game rushing, and that was most of it against Austin P last week. The final play of the half, Kerry Spears going to try a 54-yard field goal. From the right hash, trying to get Vandy three more points before the break, and you talk about a nice kick. How about that? That's why he's on the Groza list. End of the first half. End of the first half. Ten 
unanswered Vanderbilt points in the final three and a half minutes of the half, including a 54-yard field goal. We check in with Holly. Well, Coach, you guys got over 50 plays offensively just in this half alone. What was it like to have your offense out there and get some momentum? Yeah, we played we played pretty well until we gave them that one. And now they got 10 points. So, uh, But we'll regroup and uh, try to play like we did early in the game. Your defense needed to improve this week. How do you assess their improvement? Oh, we played pretty well. We haven't given up much. Played very well. You guys want me to ask you, when you get grass stains on your visor, do you change it out at the half? Yeah, I throw these things now. I don't throw my visor. <laughs> he didn't throw his visor. He kicked it. I guess that's a difference for him. More than 60 years, Wrangler's been making jeans. CC on ESPN. The Gamecocks hoping to put a little flair back in their game tonight. Carter Samuel's got a man right in his face. Down he goes. Dog the shotgun goes to the end zone. Touchdown. Davis. Touchdown. South Carolina. And now Dylan Thompson on the ground. Shows that he can run like Connor Shaw. Shaw again. Perfect throw to Sellington. Touchdown. When you talk about a nice kick. How about that? Bandy's in it now. And we welcome you back to ESPN College Football Prime Time presented by Hampton Hotels. We take a look at our first half statistics dominated by South Carolina. 52 plays, almost 400 yards of offense. They only missed one third down conversion. They had the ball nine and a half minutes more than Vanderbilt. But Bandy with 10 late points in the last three minutes, 38 seconds, including a 54 yard field goal by that guy. And so we do have a ball game to start the second half. John Carson waits back deep for South Carolina as we open up the third quarter. Carson will backpedal and just watch this one go out the back of the end zone. So 28 to 10 as we start the third. We welcome you back to Williams Bryce Stadium. Brad Nessler and Ty Blackledge, partner that. That last three minutes and 38 seconds, I think, is pretty pretty important. Yeah, well, the only bad thing South Carolina did was the turnover by Dylan Thompson. The interception was returned down to the one-yard line. So Vanderbilt capitalized on that. But the big question in the second half, can they do anything on defense? Yeah. They have not come near slowing down South Carolina other than that interception. And I think Bob Shoup's going to have to do something different. I don't think they can play base defense. I think they're going to have to try to crowd the line of scrimmage, take some chances, and try to get some pressure on Connor Shaw because uh, he's been almost unstoppable when he's been in the game. Well, we'll see what they do to open up from the 25. Four wide receiver group for Connor Shaw. He's had a big night and he comes up throwing on first down and he's got another completion out this time to his tight end Anderson as we check in with Holly. James Franklin said their biggest issue is up front. He said their offensive line is killing us. They're just protecting too well. We're not getting any pressure on the quarterback. We've got to get the ball out of the quarterback's hands. He said for us offensively, our, diff our line is not sustaining blocks. He said we can't get any momentum. We've got to get the ball to 87. He's our best. The field goal. But you're right, Holly, they haven't gotten to Shaw as Davis runs for another first down. He's just been a, a horse tonight. He hasn't had any big runs, but he's up around 50 yards on the ground. And uh, he's had some big receptions out of the backfield as well. Through two and a half games now, South Carolina's only given up three sacks, none tonight. And there's the numbers on Mike as he got uh, to 51 on his 10th carry. Looks like he was hobbling a little bit after that last one. But he did get a first down at the 36-yard line. Shaw, deep sideline, wide, open Jack rolling. And he steps out of bounds with another first down. And a pickup, 19 more. Run and pass, run and pass. They've had balance all night. Pretty big cushion by Andre Hall. Nice job by Roland pushing him down the field and then breaking it out on the comeback route. And again, good timing, good accuracy by Connor Shaw. And we've seen that the entire game. A three to the near side, but they keep it on the ground. And now Davis cuts it outside. He's got Ellington as a blocker out in front. It's inside the 40 and another good run by Mike Davis. Just instinct because that play was bottled up. I mean, he was hit in the backfield, but he wasn't wrapped up in the backfield. So he just bounced and found some space. 
got knocked back a couple steps, and then got it to the perimeter and turned it into a positive game. Picked up eight when it didn't look like there was anything. Second down and two. Two tight ends set here. Davis trying to cut back, and this time Commodores are waiting for him. Very little gain. Jake Seelan was the first guy to make contact, and then he got help from his friends. And Mike's going to have to clear a big hunk of <laughs> williams Bryce Stadium out of his face mask. Should get a little help from his friends on that. He doesn't know it's there. Third down and a yard coming up. Nice balance of run and pass for South Carolina. Davis trying to bulldoze in there. It's going to be really close. You know, Holly mentioned that James Franklin said the offensive line of South Carolina has just been really having their way with Vanderbilt's defense. We should mention for the second week in a row, South Carolina is playing with their backup center, Clayton Stadnick, number 54, in for the injured Cody Waldrop, who has a right foot injury, could not play last week in Athens, didn't play this week either. And the one thing I've noticed, Stadnick has been better with the shotgun snaps than he was a week ago. And on fourth and less than a yard, Shaw takes it himself as he took the snap under center, and he's going to have the first down. And right behind Clayton Stanton. Yes, he did. And Connor Shaw gives the first down sign in case the official wasn't going to. He's had some nice runs in his career. He's had some tough runs in his career. That was one of them. See, this is where Steve Spurrier, historically, after you get it on fourth and one, go play action here and maybe take a shot for a big play. Eighth play of the drive to open up the third quarter. Flaring it out to the tight end, Adams, and he's got a first down. That's the backup tight end, pickup of 12. And he, like Rory Anderson, a big target, 6'6", yeah. 237 pounds. And they're athletic. You know, this is a, a nice job. They took the two outside receivers to run off the coverage. Shaq Rowland comes back with a nice block, and you go underneath to the tight ends. And both Adams and Anderson are athletic guys. Brandon Wilds now in the backfield with Connor Shaw on the shotgun. They fake it to him, and now Shaw's going to take off and get back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Might have even lost a little bit. Adam Butler and Larry Franklin made the hit. Well, against North Carolina, 59 plays over 400 yards. Tonight they already have 61. They had 61 in the whole game against Georgia. And they're racking up yardage. As we told you, they're on yeah. pace for 800 yards of offense. And they're not running hurry-up tempo either. No. They're, they're just being very productive every time they have the football. I mean, they're still huddling. They're not going tempo offense. They're just productive. They shift out of the lineup they had. when they were in a pistol set. And now... Both running backs come out of the backfield as Connor Shaw threw it to nobody. And flag down. I think maybe he's going to have a rough in the passer on Weatherly. Either that or holding, thrown in the same area. You're right, Todd. Holding. Corey Robinson was trying to keep Weatherly off of holding. Connor Shaw. On the offense, number 53, 10-yard penalty. Repeat, second down. Big left tackle, 6'8", 341-pound junior. Yeah, it was just a quick rush. Watch, he gets beat off the snap and isn't able to recover and instinctively just grabs. And that's, uh, you know, you want him to keep your his guy off the quarterback, but he just got beat off the first step on that rush. And you saw Connor Shaw did hit the deck, and he got up limping, but that was not Weatherly's fault because he was pushed in and kind of leg whipped underneath. The legs of Connor Shaw, but backs it up to second down at 21. Wants to throw a middle screen, does. Wilds on the run. Wilds in the open, Wilds is gone. Touchdown, South Carolina. Nobody touched him. Brandon Wilds, 33-yard touchdown reception. That's sloppy defense because you run the screen on second and long to get part of that yardage back and set up a manageable third down. They just got an easy touchdown out of it.
Good blocking downfield by the center, Stadnick, and the right guard, Ronald Patrick. But I think that was poor defense by Vanderbilt as much as anything. Elliott Fry with a point after. Been a busy kicker tonight. It's good. Yes, All State makes contributions in participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, All State's contributed more than $3 million in scholarship money. South Carolina's had touchdown drives tonight of 42, 75, 76, 92, and 93 yards. And thus, 466 yards of offense. Brandon Wilds had the last touchdown, a 33-yard screen pass, and nobody touched him. It's really a nice combination between Wilds and Mike Davis. They're both powerful guys, and uh, they keep the legs fresh in that backfield. Kick off the Sims about a yard deep. Turns on some extra burners and gets out near the 30 yard line. So that's where the offense comes back out now, trailing again by 25. James Franklin in his third year has done a nice job with Vandy. They've had some off the field issues for sure in the past two and a half, three months, which he has tried to keep his team focused from those problems and tried to shoulder all of uh, all of what's gone on in Nashville over the course of the last three months. We'll talk more about that in a second. Austin Carter Samuels in the shotgun on their first possession of the third quarter. He's going to go deep down the middle and got it to Jordan Matthews and Matthews takes uh, two or three Gamecocks to bring him down. But he got it across midfield down at the 49-yard line. Well, they moved him to a different position. He's been out wide most of the game. This time he was in the tight slot. It's a lot harder to double him when he's in tight. He does a nice job getting behind the linebackers. He beats his man right off the, the play. That's Bryson Williams, the safety, who was covering him in the slot. And to get him the football early to start the third quarter. At the 48-yard line. Now, Carter Samuels calls the play and then trots out as a wide receiver as they go to the Wildcat. And this time, nice blocking. Seymour all the way down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. That's the best that's worked tonight, a pickup of 20. Well, see, the difference is they didn't substitute. They didn't put the extra lineman in. Carter Samuels called the signals, then he went out wide. So South Carolina wasn't necessarily anticipating the run, and they caught him a little off balance with that adjustment at halftime. They didn't put the extra lineman in. They just shifted the quarterback out, direct snapped it to the running back, and got a nice game. Fitz Lassing, the fullback, got the big block at the end to give him some extra yardage. So they got it first and 10 at the 28-yard line of South Carolina. Here comes a blitz on Carter Samuels. He fires long, and it's incomplete. The closest man out there was Jonathan Kraus. Rouse, they expect some things from him this year in his senior season. Trying to take advantage of his opportunities here because uh, it's his last year, and they think that the lights sort of come on for him. He's a really good punt returner, but they want him to be a bigger part of the passing game. They don't have Chris Boyd, who was a 50-reception guy a year ago because of what I was talking about with the issues that Vanderbilt's had. So Jordan Matthews is their big play receiver, but they don't really have a second guy. This time they flip it out to Matthews, and he's going to lose a couple of yards. Second time they've run that play in the ball game. The first time it caught South Carolina off guard a little bit, and they were able to get a positive gain. This time, South Carolina ready for it. Got the loss of yardage play. And it brings up third down and 11. And now Jadavian Clowney coming from the other side. Got some pressure. They get the pass away, and it's complete to Seymour. And he picked up about five, but that's it. Couldn't get to the first down marker. Now do you go on fourth down here, halfway through the third quarter? I think you might have to because you realize defensively you don't have much chance stopping South Carolina. So I, I think you, you realize you're in the red zone or close to the red zone. You got to try to keep some offense going here. Yeah. 
The faithful here at Williams Rice knows what this one means. And they're going to try to make it rough on the Commodores and their quarterback. Clowney's up on the left side this time, not on the right. Second play in a row, he's been up there. Carter Samuels throws over the top of him, and it's complete. And it's a first down to Chris Cantera. And that quiets the crowd as they've got it at the 17-yard line. I don't quite understand why they had Clowney dropping in coverage, and maybe that's what Steve Spurrier's asking. Why take one of the premier pass rushers in the country and have him drop into coverage on Jordan Matthews? And Steve said to Holly at halftime, he doesn't throw the visor anymore, but it's, it's on the ground right now. Wasn't crazy about his defense against Georgia and wasn't crazy about it on that play. Look out. Here comes Clowney. Ball is out. South Carolina's got it. Yeah, that's a sack a, and a forced fumble. That's a little better design than having him drop in coverage like they did on fourth down. Steve got his point across, and Jadavian Clowney made a play. Thank you, Orville and Wilbur. ESPN College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Taco Bell's new fiery Doritos Locos Taco, Live Moss, and the all-new Kia Soul, sleeker and more sophisticated than ever. State Capitol here in Columbia, 35 to 10. Number 13, South Carolina leading Vanderbilt, and Jadavian Clowney just gave it back to his offense. Well, and Holly reported at the very beginning of the game that Jadavian Clowney was given permission by Lorenzo Ward, the defensive coordinator, whenever he wanted to switch sides, he could do that. And he was not having a lot of success against Wesley Johnson on the right side. He moved over against Andrew Bridges and beat him and got the sack and the turnover the last play. They fake it to Wilds and come up throwing to Ellington. And Ellington with blockers in front ran out of real estate. He had a big, big game. Javon Marshall ran him out of bounds, but he did get 12. There's a flag down. Holding on the offense, number 82. That's a 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, first down. Well, that's why he had some room to run. Quentin Smith, redshirt freshman with a holding call. Just past the midway point of the third quarter, 25-point lead for South Carolina. Backed up now to their 16-yard line. It's a spot foul, so that's going to make it first and 17. Austin Carter Samuel just wants the ball back. A chance to do something with the offense. They have done very little tonight. South Carolina's played extremely well on both sides of the ball and now flags down again. And Matt Leffler is going to say before the snap, ball start. ball start on the offense. Number 50, five yard penalty, first down. Check in with Holly. Headlinesman Gus Morris was injured just before the half. I do have an update. I am told that he suffered a concussion and a sprained ankle, but he did tell somebody he is feeling okay. Gus, we're thinking of you. Hope you feel better. His uh, alternate official will stay out and finish the game. Okay, great, Holly. We're waiting on that. Gus, you're probably watching the rest of the game, and we wish you the best on getting better soon, and hopefully you'll be back out officiating in the weeks to come. Mike Davis, and this time wrapped up. By Kyle Westman, big junior out of Marietta, Georgia. Setting the edge over there and making the tackle. With those penalties, this has kind of ruined the turnover forced by yeah. Clowney. Any momentum that they got from it is uh, quickly gone away with the backwards movement here. So they backed up to the 12 with a second and 21. Second and long has been screened down for South Carolina in the ball game. We don't have to get it all at once. Three wide receivers to Connor Shaw's right, and he's going to be one of the quarterback draw. And he didn't get it all at once, but he did bring it up to a third down and about 11. Third down, they were nearly perfect in the first half. Only missed one. Now third down and 11. Both the fullback and Brandon Wilds back there with Connor Shaw. 
Anytime you are 80% on your third dime conversions, you've had a good night. Andy was thinking about a blitz. They back out of it. Here's the swing pass to Wilds. And Wilds cuts up to the 30, but he didn't get to the first down marker. They got nine, but they needed a couple more. Yeah, they didn't get it, but they, this, this play has been effective for them all night. And it's very simple. I mean, they're, they're reading down the field, and then they got the back coming out. And if they cover down here, you dump it off to the back. It's, it's just a simple read. Look downfield. If they cover that, dump it to the back, see if he can make somebody miss in space, and turn a short catch into a long game. And they, they've had a lot of success. Tell you what, these wide receivers for South Carolina are pretty good blockers, too. Yeah. They had a good one at the end of that play, but it, just a little bit shy for Wilds. And so Tyler Hull's got to kick it away. And fair catch. Look out, everybody. Stay away from the football, and it's going to bounce back to South Carolina territory. Yeah, it was high and short to begin with, and then it uh, worked its way backwards. Finally, the Commodores have a short field to work with. They'll be in South Carolina territory when we come back. Got to an early lead in this one. Vanderbilt got 10 points in the final three and a half minutes of the first half. Carter Samuels. The quarterback split out to the right side again, and they go with Wesley Tate this time in the Wildcat. He's the bigger back in the group, and Tate, this is his first carry. They maybe should have put him in there earlier, all the way to the 31-yard line. Well, that's the second time in the third quarter now that they, they didn't substitute the extra lineman. This time they called it in the huddle and then went with the shift, and they get equal numbers at the line of scrimmage and good upfield running by Wesley Tate. First down at the 31. Chase Sutton, uh, Chad Sutton was a little bit slow getting up, but he's still sort of looking at the sideline. Like he might want to come out of there. They actually ran the ball at Clowney that time. And got a good game. See if they can do it two times in a row. Waiting for his blockers, busting through. They do do it two times in a row. This is an eight yard pickup. Kedetrix Marcus, who's been battling an injury and a shoulder injury missed most of the game last week and he was in on the tackle and he's down again Fitz Lassing the fullback is doing a nice job blocking I mean they it's just power running a little counter you got a guard pulling you got the fullback leading the guard gets Sutton the fullback gets the linebacker and back-to-back -back plays Wesley Tate positive game Tate the senior Picks up positive yardage and has a short yardage situation for the Vanderbilt offense. He's second down with 3.28 to go when we come back. Check it. Well, the Wildcat has been working, Todd, the uh, whole drive here for the Commodore. Well, I think, again, the big reason that it's worked and it didn't work in the first half is they have not used the additional offensive linemen. Here they are again. Now this time, they get a little heavier package in with the extra tackle playing the tight end. Again, the hesitation. And another first down run. And extra effort. Wesley Tate playing like he wants more snaps right yeah. now. Well, Tate's running hard, and I think the offensive line got the message from their head coach, James Franklin, in the locker room at halftime. Because they're coming out with a little bit more aggressiveness. That time, Clowney was lined up in the middle of the formation. They're trying to move him around. He's trying to get a little bit more active. And uh, there's just a little feistiness, a new feistiness, I think, to this Vanderbilt offensive line here in the second half. Now they've got quarterback under center in the red zone. And the pitch is to Tate. And Tate got a nice block, tripped up, or he might have had a big gainer. And he lost his shoe in the process. Fitz Lassing again leading the play. Gerald Dixon with the shoestring tackle. Watch number 38 leading on the sweep. Nice block also by the right tackle, Andrew Bridges. And now Carter Samuels in trouble. Clowney giving chase. He got a good block from him. And he'll tuck it and get out of bounds at the line of scrimmage. Got to give Wesley Johnson. We talked about the big left tackle, one of the captains. A senior out of Nashville. Looked like Clowney. Maybe had Carter Samuels in his sights with Carter Samuel. Nice move. Then got the block from Johnson to keep number seven off him. The Dietrich Marcus is back in after being shaken up a little bit earlier. Number 25 you see on the left-hand side of your screen. Well, if you're going to throw on this third down play, 
I would make sure you have a back or a tight end over there to help on Clowney. I wouldn't let him rush one on one with your right tackle. You Got to think this is two down territory. Three points doesn't do him much good at this stage of the ball game, and it's quarterback draw. Carter Samuel puts his head down, gets hit hard at the ten yard line, and now we'll see if I'm right or wrong. Right, fourth down and one. Yeah. Well, that's a play designed to take advantage of J Jadavian Clowney rushing upfield. They didn't even block him. They let him come upfield, and they ran the quarterback draw inside of him, and they got very close. Now it's fourth and short. All right, I'd say they almost have to go to the direct snap here again. That's been their bread and butter so far in the third quarter. Now this is to keep Vanderbilt in the ball game right here. Yep, see there goes the quarterback out wide. They'll direct snap it and takes the back. Wesley Tate has done most of the damage on this drive. Can he get another yard? South Carolina knows he's going to run it, but can they stop him? No, they can't. First down. He's a physical guy. 6'1", 224, a fifth-year senior out of Madison, Tennessee, and he's running with some aggressiveness right now. They have... They have the extra lineman in. Andrew Jelks playing the tight end position. They're getting good push. He spent most of a couple years ago as a wide receiver and kind of wishes he would have been able to stay at tailback. They just had a need at wide receiver. But I can see that it's nice to have hands coming out of the backfield or have that experience. But he's a good-looking runner right here when he's just getting the snap and going for it. Let's see if he'll go for it again. First and goal at the six. And this time, only a yard game. Dewan Lewis, one of the linebackers, made the first hit. Tate's got 38 yards on the ground on this drive alone, Ledge. Yep. Well, they, they found something that's working. Now, the only problem is, as they get closer to the goal line, you know, the, the field gets shorter, and South Carolina's going to stack that line of scrimmage a little bit more, so they'll be unblocked guys that Tate's going to have to take on in these runs. Well, they're going to have to wait and run it on the other end. We'll switch ends about 95 yards. The SEC on ESPN as we played three quarters. Vanderbilt threatening to start the fourth quarter, but they're going to need all they can do in the fourth. They're down by 25. Hey, Papa. The Gamecocks in command, but Vanderbilt's Commodores to start the fourth have it first and goal at the South Carolina Five. I don't know if Vanderbilt has anything like this in their offensive repertoire, but if they had some kind of a pop pass, a Tebow-esque kind of play out of this direct snap, I think it'd be wide open here on second down. They've had eight plays, all rushes on this drive. Tate again. He thought about it on the next yep. side, and now he's going to run to the corner and get to the one. They, that's what they were looking to do, and it was covered. South Carolina had good defensive discipline. But they tried to release the tight end, and South Carolina had it covered. Now they're inside the one-yard line with a third goal. Now again, you go to that same issue. If you go shotgun, you take the ball from the one-yard line and automatically put it on the six with the snap. You go under center with your quarterback, and that's what Vanderbilt is electing to do. Nope, they're going to go shotgun. Carter Samuel. Pump fakes and he'll run it himself for the touchdown. So both quarterbacks, all three quarterbacks tonight, showing that they can score on the ground. And Carter Samuel's a senior. Offside. On the defense, number 15. That penalty is declined. The touchdown is good. With a one-yard touchdown yeah. run. And that little pump fake. It, it didn't do much, but it did enough. It moved the linebackers just enough outside to set up a block and get the ball in the end zone on the quarterback run. Gary Spear in for the point after. There's still a lot of time left in this football game. It's about to be an 18 point difference. Up and good. 35-17. The Vanderbilt has made it a ball game, and we still have the entire fourth quarter to go. Carter Samuels, there's that fake, and there's the one-yard play. 30 now in our college football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. Todd 
finish the touchdown again. Well, these three guys are affected by the pump fake. Clowney's going to come up field, and these two guys are going to move just enough that way to allow blocks to be fitted and Carter Samuel to get the ball in the end zone. It caused just enough movement to allow blockers to get in position and Carter Samuel to get the ball into the end zone. Pretty well executed play right there on the goal line. There was. Capped off a 49 yard drive, 10 plays, a little over five minutes. And it's made it 35 to 17. Remember at one point this game was very lopsided before 10 points in the final three and a half minutes of the second quarter to at least give Vanderbilt some hope. Now they've got more hope with another touchdown. John Carson from a yard deep. And he took a big hit. Balls out. And the ball's out, I think. And that's exactly, if it is, what Vanderbilt and needed. And he's got it. They do. Wow, what a play. Williamson comes up with a ball on the special team. There's the collision. Ball yep. is out. Number 30 got his head right on the football. Larry, Larry Franklin. Franklin. Yep. yep. I mean, he's got it protected. It's in there. But a big shot by Larry Franklin. The ball came out. And Vanderbilt right back in business. In the red zone. At the 19 of South Carolina. Larry got to check and see if his knee was down before the ball came out. So again, they'll go to replay. Ruling was a fumble. John Carson suffered through a couple of seasons of having injuries, had an ACL when he was a freshman and missed all but the bowl game last year with a wrist injury. And now it's his feelings that are hurt if indeed that's a fumble. Meanwhile, Vanderbilt's offense is over there Thinking up strategy to try to make this a very close game. Here's another look. Balls. His knee's not down yet. And the ball is out before it touches, in, in my opinion, in my opinion. And again, the ruling on the field was a fumble recovered by Vanderbilt. It has to be undisputable evidence to overturn that call. This one's quick. Yeah. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It was a fumble recovered by Vanderbilt. First down, Vanderbilt. So let's see what the Doors offense can do. In the last possession, it was a lot of direct snap to Wesley Tate. Let's see if they start this possession the same way. Tate is the back in the game for Vanderbilt. He's been the hot hand or the hot legs. And now it's Carter Samuels. Now this is an off-balance line. The tight end is to the left. They're looking for a trick play to the tight end. Middle screen to Tate. Tate straight up the gut. Tate touchdown. Great play. 19 yards right after the fumble kick. Great, great play because South Carolina was anticipating the trick play. This is a tight end, and they're expecting to throw there. All their checks are to cover the tight end, and nobody took Tate coming out of the backfield. They fooled the South Carolina defense with their alignment, and they got the touchdown in one play. And they're going to go for two. Carter Samuels. In the backfield with Tate again. Two-point conversion attempt. Matthews is in tight on the left. Going to throw that way to the tight end, and they got the two-point conversion to Stephen Shoy. Wow, all of a sudden, football game in Columbia. Yep. One play after the... Recovery of the fumbled kick. Carter Samuel throws to the middle to Tate. He goes 19 yards. They're going for two to try to make it a 10-point game, and he finds Shoy is tight end in the corner. Ball game right now, 35-25. Good. There were a few people that left 
Williams Bryce Stadium. They maybe shouldn't have. 35-25. Vandy after the fumble recovery on the kickoff. Yeah. Takes it one play. And then a two-point conversion. Two turnovers, and they capitalized on both of them with touchdowns. And uh, right back in the football game. Vanderbilt scored 15 points in the last 13 seconds. Got Bruce Ellington back now as a kick return man, not Sean Carson. He's the guy that dropped the last one. And Ellington says, I don't want to touch it either. We'll bring it out to the 25. We'll take a look at our good hands play brought to you by Allstate. Could be a good call play by Allstate, too, Todd. Well, this is a one-time shot. It's a tackle over. This is an offensive lineman. He's not an eligible receiver. This is. South Carolina is ready for the tight end, but they're not ready for Wesley Tate. They don't have enough guys over here to defend the screen to Tate. He has to catch it behind the line of scrimmage, what he does, and then he has a clear path to the end zone. It was a beautifully timed call by offensive coordinator John Donovan, and that's one of those plays. You get it one time a game. They got the look they wanted, and they paid it off with a touchdown. And we told you Wesley Tate, the former receiver, so he's got good hands, obviously, and knew what to do with it as a running back once he touched it. And now, Andy's going to blitz on first down. Connor Shaw keeps it, runs up the middle. Connor Shaw, 15 yards, 20 yards, big gainer for the quarterback. Yep. That was just good patience by Connor Shaw because you called it. There was an inside blitz. Vanderbilt brought two guys up into the A gap, and that means there's nobody in the second level of the defense. So as soon as Shaw was able to get to that part of the defense, he had some open field to run. He was patient to allow the traffic to clear and then got a nice run out of it. Got across the 45 for a first down. 13 and a half minutes to go. Shaw in the gun. Play fake. Keeps it again. And only got about a yard. As did the ball come out at the end? Let's go a second. Nope. I'm going to say he was down. Let's check in with Reese Davis. Reese. here in the SEC a second down to nine for South Carolina blitz coming on Shaw flares it out complete to the tight end gets what he can puts his hand down and dives in the Vanderbilt territory Jarrell Adams Connor Shaw's hit his last seven passes and he's 21 out of 27 I think you, you got to go after him on this third down play. They were perfect on third down the first half. You got to pressure him and see if you can force him into a mistake. Got the tight end, Rory Anderson, in the slot. Now he's going to come in to help give Connor Shaw some time. But still, three wide receivers for Shaw. Slant is too far in front of Bruce Ellington. I like, the, I like the decision by Vanderbilt. They did bring pressure. They brought extra guys. They left themselves with man-to-man -man coverage. And Connor Shaw, one of his few inaccurate throws of the night. And how about Connor Shaw? He pointed as if to say, let's go for yeah. it on fourth. And Steve Spurrier said, I don't think so. No. Got to punt it here. Yeah, you don't want to give Vanderbilt any more reason to get excited. And a short field on a missed fourth down makes no sense. Again, hit to the far side. And a diving catch, a good catch, by Jonathan Krause around the 21. So with 11.59 remaining in the ball game, guess who's got the ball back, only trailing by 10? Commodores of Vanderbilt trying to pull a shocker and trying to have a miracle comeback. Still a long way to go. Take a look at our Discover Game Changer. This game has definitely changed. Carter Samuels... But that pump fake that goes in from a yard out for the touchdown that started the comeback, and this is huge right here, Todd. Yeah, they've had two turnovers they forced, and both of them have led directly to scores. The very next play, the trick play, the throw to Tate, and they're right back in the football game. And in the second half particularly, they've had a short field to work with, and that is uh, 
that's helped them because they were struggling against this Carolina defense in the first half with the long field. Remember, they scored 15 points in 13 seconds over that stretch we just showed you. And now trying to throw a slip screen out to Jordan Matthews, and the ball was thrown well behind him and too low. Kelsey Corals kind of messed that one up, getting his big body in the way. Probably better that it was dropped yeah. because it was going to be a loss of yardage play. That screen worked well the first time they ran it, and the last couple times South Carolina has been right on it, which means what's set up is to fake that screen and look to throw it down the field. They're overplaying that screen. You got to do something off of that action. Second down and 10. Pump fake, and now a run all the way by the quarterback, Carter Samuels. Got two, but it's going to be third down and eight. Marquise Roberts in on the stop. Lock winding its way around the 11 minute mark. They're going to come up and hurry up here. So we'll be around 11 and a half when they snap it. Big third down. Clowney is lined up on the right end, and Chaz Sutton is on the same side as him. So they're two best pass rushers on the same side. Down the middle, tipped, incomplete, almost intercepted. T.J. Holloman got a hand on that one in route number 11. Holloman playing linebacker. He's running underneath this route, and he gets his hands on it, and that's why they were able to make contact with the receiver. Because there was a tip ball, that's not pass interference. You're allowed to hit the receiver after the ball's tip. So the punting unit comes out. Last time Taylor Hudson kicked it, he kicked it 75 yards. They'd like another one of those right here. And it's Victor Hampton. Came in averaging a little over seven per return. Low snap. He gets it out of there. This one's not going to go 75 yards. Unless it bounces for about that 40. Hit it Carolina hit it. South player. Carolina player. I think they got it again. Battle underneath. It was a low rugby type kick. And TJ Gurley, I think, didn't know where the football was and it hit his leg. Not a signal from the referee yet. The officials having a committee meeting. Steve Spurrier's in the middle of it. And they need to get away from the players and the coaches and make a decision. The ruling on the field, it was touched by the receiving team, recovered by the kicking team. First down for Vanderbilt. Holy smoke. And he's got it back again. The problem is that not the return man, but one of the blockers, Gurley, doesn't know where the ball is. And it hit his foot clearly. It did. Hit his it left foot. It changed the course of the football. And it looks like Might Vanderbilt got the ball. Could be Darius Sims on the bottom, number six. Hard to tell. Now, part of that is Hampton, the return man. He's got to be yelling to his blockers to get away from the ball, to let him know where it is. First down, at any rate. South Carolina trying to not implode right here. Carter Samuels comes out as a wide receiver. Here comes a blitz. Tate's going to take it up the middle. He's got a first down and more. Boy, they just have the right answers now. Little fakes. They fake the counter to the left and design the run back. Watch the movement to the left by Tate. That sends the linebackers that way, and then he follows the tight end, Shoy, right up through the middle. Well-designed play. Right now, John Donovan is dialing up some excellent calls against this South Carolina defense. First down inside the Carolina 25. Toss sweep. Tate trying to follow his blockers. Will get back to the line of scrimmage. Actually, he's going to lose a yard. Did Avian Clowney help to blow that one up on that side? Still have your most dynamic player as Jordan Matthews. Tate again cuts back to the middle. He's got a first down and more. And Clowney trying to rip it out of his hand. Did make the tackle, but it's first and goal. This South Carolina defense had their way in the first half. Didn't have to run a whole lot of plays. Second half, a different story. They're playing in their own end of the field. And they look a little bit out of sync right now. We saw that last week against Georgia. And Georgia gashed them pretty good. And right now, Vanderbilt has the upper hand. First and goal at the nine. Jaron Seymour this time in the Wildcat. He's bumped down after a pickup of a couple. 
With 10 minutes to go in the first half, Todd, it was 28 to nothing. Yeah. 35-25. And Mandy, barring some kind of major catastrophe, is going to at least get three out of this or a field goal attempt. But they're thinking touchdown, obviously. Second down to goal. At the eight-yard line of the Gamecocks. Seymour. Trying to follow his blockers, got to the five. That brings up third down and goal. Seymour looks a little more hesitant than Tate. Tate had to come out to get a break. Now it's third down, and it's probably a passing situation. But Tate has really given them a boost offensively. But Davian County is not in there right now either. Third and goal at the five. Well, this has to be Jordan Matthews' time. I mean, it, this he's definitely going to be the number one look on this play. Here he is right here in the slot. Carter Samuels in the shotgun. Watch the football. Comes the other way on the slant. It's intercepted in the end zone. Jimmy LaGree. Intended for Cunningham. I don't get that. I don't get the read. You go to Cunningham, the true freshman. I can see it maybe if he gets wide open, but this is pretty good coverage by Legree. He's not open. And, and he would have been better off to take a knee right there. He yeah. fell out of the end zone at the one foot line. Might have been pushed or tackled by Cunningham out to the one foot line. We've got to take a look at this one as well. Great play on the ball, yeah. either way. Now that's a case of a defensive back just out muscling the young wide receiver. I mean, he just fought harder for the ball. Cunningham did not help his quarterback very much. You know, when you run that slant route, he's got to stay between the defender and the football. And Legree just just bullied him. He just pushed him out of the way. You get a box out with your body a little bit somehow. Instead, Jimmy Legree. Hops in front. I, I just think when you're in that situation on that kind of play, you got to go to your best player. I mean, Tate's on the bench because he's tired. The best player on the field for you right there is Jordan Matthews. You got to give him a chance to make a play for you in the end zone. Don't go away from him unless the coverage dictates you have to go away from him. The review is not whether or not it was an interception. The review is going to be whether or not Legree was in the end zone or was at the one foot line. And there's a major difference. Yep. Touchback and breathing room or one foot line for your offense. And the ruling on the field is the one foot line. Well, again, all that came down to was Carter Samuels thought he had a one on one matchup, and that was to his advantage, but it ended up not being it because Legree's a senior. And Cunningham's a freshman, and the senior just outmuscled the young receiver and made a play on the football. Well, again, we wait on the replay, and we're about ready to get word from our referee. Here's the call. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. It's an interception on the one yard line for South Carolina. So that means that. Connor Shaw, or at least his center, will be over the ball with his feet in the end zone as well. The last thing you want here is a safety and getting the ball back in 35-27. But it's that close, length of the football. And I wouldn't be shocked if Steve Spurrier doesn't go play action here and trust his quarterback, Connor Shaw, to make a good decision. Vanderbilt expecting run. Your quarterback is a smart guy. Maybe take a shot for a play. Oh, he called it, Parker. Here it comes. And almost intercepted by Andre Hall. Made a nice play on the yeah. ball on the far side. Yeah, he was right on it. This is a long throw. It's all the way across the field, an out route, kind of a dangerous throw, and Hall was in perfect position. I mean, he was squatting on the route and made a beautiful play. Intended for Demir Bird. Now you almost got to go back to Mike Davis to try to blast it out of there, don't you? The fullback, yeah. McLaurin's in there. 
Again, those guys are four yards or so deep in well, the end zone. They got a penalty. They had 12 guys on the field. Illegal substitution on the offense. 12 men in the formation. Half the distance to the goal. Second down. And that's going to be about the eight-inch line. You can't get any closer to the goal line going the wrong way than what South Carolina has right now. Yeah. And now you may even have to go quarterback sneak, go under the center and go sneak to get a little breathing room. And he's only got four guys on the defensive line. Shaw in the gun. He'll have to throw from here. Well, maybe not. There's Connor Shaw, what he does best. And he might have a first down. Boy, they let one get away there, the Commodores defense. The crowd reacting, they didn't like the spot. That's third down and one. And now they do line up under center with an eye backfield. It'll be a big first down, and Connor Shaw's got it. Oh, what a good read by Connor Shaw. The defense of Vanderbilt bunched inside. They, they covered the guard. Look, they, they bunch inside, and Connor Shaw just going to take the sneak right there. He sees the inside move, and he just waits a half a step and goes outside for the easy conversion. His fullback says, I didn't know you were going to do that, dude, <laughs> but it was a nice play. <laughs> Why go in there and get a, a, an unnecessary headache when you can just go a little bit outside and fall to the ground and get a first down? Now, seven and a half minutes to go, and South Carolina with a first down. Clinging to a 10-point lead, but in much better shape now. Davis had a By tough two or three. One thing that Vanderbilt's defense has not been able to do tonight is they've had South Carolina pinned down deep a couple times, and they've not been able to keep them down there. They've gotten turnovers, but they've not been able to keep them down deep. They started three drives inside the 10, including the 12-inch line, yeah. and they've worked their way out of every issue they've had down there on a long field two tight ends here on second down and seven they can take their time now South Carolina like to use as much game clock as they can and we're under seven minutes and it's Connor Shaw all the way tripped up short of the first down He's within a yard or two of it see this is the same situation we saw last week just with the shoe on the other foot Georgia had a two score lead and the ball and they could take their time they could extend the game because they knew that the opponent needed to score twice and that's that's the situation Vanderbilt's in right now they've got to score twice and South Carolina can use as much clock as they can it's amazing you said it's almost the same time in the fourth quarter last week and yep. Georgia ran out the clock yep. so that's what South Carolina is going to try to do here seven days later high snap third and two option Davis has got the first down he's got a bunch more Mike Davis, another good run. And have a creative pitch by Connor Shaw, too. It was almost like a little forward pass. It wasn't your normal pitch. Watch, it's kind of a throw pitch. Good balance by Mike Davis, and he stays in bounds. And again, that's what you tell your backs right now. Get what you can get and go down and stay in bounds and keep that clock running. Another 80-yard night after back-to-back -back hundreds. He might have 100 before this one's over, too, if they keep feeding it to him. They've traveled 35 yards on this drive, and they've worked it under the six-minute mark. Taken three minutes off the clock so far. This time, Davis will lose yardage. And nice play by Harding Harper. Let's check in with Reese Davis. Reese? Reese, this was a laugher in the first half. It's not that funny anymore, but South Carolina at the five-minute mark has a 10-point lead. Option coming the other way to Brandon Wilds, and Wilds, a big hole, holding out of the football for dear life, and he's close to a first down. Mike Davis limped off after that last play where he lost a couple of yards. 
mentioned earlier these wide receivers for South Carolina blocking downfield. Bruce Ellington is one tough dude now. He gets another good block. Watch him lead the block right there on the safety. Stays right engaged with him. And Wilds runs right by him. They got a Vandy player down. And I think it's Adam Butler. The redshirt freshman defensive tackle. South Carolina's run it seven straight times. Most of them by the quarterback and some by Mike Davis. The last one by Wilds has him third down and two, third down and one when we come back. Four minutes ago to make it a field goal game, but an interception in the end zone by Jimmy Legree, or actually at the one yard line. And now 44 yards and uh, eight plays later, South Carolina's got some breathing room, but they still need this third down in the yard. And this time it's really tough. I'm not going to call this one. I think he might be a little bit short. I guess I just did call it. Connor Shaw has had so many big chunks of yardage tonight. He needed a yard there, and he might not have gotten that much. South Carolina took over the football in their own one with eight minutes and 41 seconds left in the ball game. And they have moved it out and chewed up clock and kept the ball away from Vanderbilt. They're going to bring the sticks out to look at this one. Let's check in with Holly. Well, they measure this. Let me just update. Mike Davis of South Carolina, their good running back, has been taken to the sideline, sitting on the training table. They are examining his left ankle. He was complaining of some hydration issues and cramps earlier in the game. They've been hydrating him, but this time they've cut the tape off his ankle, and he does appear to be in some pain. I'll check on Adam Butler of Vanderbilt next, guys. All right, Holly, thanks. Length of the football shy. What do you do here, partners? Fourth down and a foot. Oh, boy. Ooh. They're at the 46-yard line. Think, their own. I think part of it is you say, you know what, if we can't make fourth and a foot at home, we don't deserve to win this football game. If Hunter they don't, Shaw, if they don't get this, it's a short field again for it Vandy. Is. It is. I think this is the right call. I think you go for it and you let your quarterback run the football. Well, he got a fourth and one earlier, that shifty little move to just bounce it outside and ignore the would-be block by his fullback. He's going to try it again, and he got it again. A little Hunter different Shaw, play, but the same result. Really and the important thing is the clock continues to run. Now Vandy will have to start thinking about using its timeouts. Boy, he paid the price for that one. Almost lost his helmet. And the head ball coach says, there we go. And again, now you go back to taking your time. Working clock and then still running positive plays. You, you don't want to get complacent offensively, but you want to use as much of the play clock and the game clock as you can. Ellington comes in, settles in on that wing to the right side. And up the middle goes Brandon Wilds to midfield. Ten straight runs for South Carolina from their probably 10-inch line to about 10 inches shy of the 50. Nice to have a guy like Brandon Wilds. Yep. They rotate. He rotates with Mike Davis anyway, and he's the bigger of the two considerably. 6'2", 225 pounds. So he's uh, about five inches taller and 10 pounds heavier than Mike. But he's really been needed tonight. First to spell Davis just to give him a breather, and now with Mike on the sideline, Brandon's getting most of the work when Connor Shaw's not running it. And here he comes again, and he blasts his way to the 45 of Vanderbilt. Another third and short. Looks like Vanderbilt might be taking a timeout. And there's their first with 235 remaining. If you own a business, you know incorporating can be a smart way to protect yourself. You mentioned Connor Shaw. He's perfect when he plays here. If this holds up, he'll be 12 and 0 at home. Blitz coming from the Commodores. Wilds is going to try to run right by it. And he got three in a first down. And now James Franklin looks up there thinking about another timeout, but it's kind of a helpless feeling. Yeah. You know, I mean, this, this thing started inside their one yard line. You can't get them off the field. You had a chance to score to make it a one possession game, and uh, 
you can look up at that clock and you say, we're just, we just, we're running out of time. We yep. got to score twice and we can't get them off the field. And it's a pretty helpless feeling for a coach. It's going to be down right around two minutes remaining when Connor Shaw takes this next snap. On a first down at the Vanderbilt 42 yard line. Wilds got three and Jake Sealand made the stop. We talked about the game last week when that same helpless feeling was on the South Carolina side when Georgia ran off the last 8.28 off the clock. South Carolina trying to do the same. With a timeout here, we've got time to check in with Reese. Try to get you right to that game when we're done. This drive, 14 plays, 60 yards, four first downs. And we mentioned they chewed up the majority of the clock just like Georgia did to South Carolina last week. South Carolina's doing it to Vanderbilt tonight. And Vandy can only stop it one more time. You have to be impressed with the resiliency of both teams. You know, Vanderbilt was out of this game early, 28 to nothing. They got the turnover, they fought themselves back into the game. Then they had a, a burst there in the third quarter where they really looked like they were gaining momentum in the game. They closed the gap. South Carolina looked a little bit out of it and then they have responded with an incredible drive here. And with two seconds on the play clock, they give it off to Brandon Wilds for a yard. Adam Butler in on the stop, but the clock is Vandy's enemy, so they have to stop it the final time right here. With a minute 48 remaining. And a third down coming up. But South Carolina have two plays to try to pick up that first down. And if they do it in two plays, the lights are out at William Price until we leave. Connor Shaw had a couple of drop passes, but pinpoint threading the needle passes. Part of the touchdowns tonight. Mike Davis, another tough ground game. Shaw again, this time on a perfect throw to Bruce Ellington. 111 yards, career high for Ellington, who had not been a big part of the offense the first two weeks, but certainly tonight he's huge. Not only as a receiver, but as a walker. And just been so well documented, also a starter on the basketball team. Such a hard double duty thing in, in today's world of college athletics to be as good as he is in both sports is. Uh, Pretty commendable. Nothing like a 16 play drive so far to try to ice the game. And South Carolina takes a timeout. Something Steve Spurrier didn't like, and Steve walked out on the field and took it himself. So some of the things they were worried about coming off the uh, loss to Georgia last week, for the most part, they've alleviated that now. You're going to say, well, the defense has given up all these points. But remember, 10 points were scored, right. one on a turnover that went down to the one-yard line, and then they got a 54-yard yeah. field goal. So I know coordinators always say, well, if you take right. those two plays away. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we love that, don't we? I, I do think they played better, though. They yeah. got lined up. They were a little bit more active. They were a little bit more in sync. You know, the turnovers really kept Vanderbilt in the game. They capitalized on those turnovers. But the resiliency here, taking the ball over, they get the turnover, first of all take over on the one then their offensive right. line just really asserts itself and uh, it's been a good football game both teams have fought but South Carolina looks like they're gonna come away with a much needed win Wilds now trying to take it wide he doesn't want to go out of bounds and he just backpedals his way close to a first down and it is gonna be fourth down at about a yard yard and a half but again the clock's just gonna work its way down here and even if Vanderbilt was to get a stop, they would uh, have about a minute to try to get 10 points. Of course, they got 15 in 13 seconds, but that was a little different scenario. 15 straight running plays by South Carolina. If you would have told Steve Spurrier that when he was at Florida, he would look at you and call you crazy, completely crazy. 
I wonder if he appreciates the irony and recognizes it the same way we do of, <laughs> that he was know. in this exact same situation only on the helpless side a week ago. So timeout on a fourth and two upcoming. And South Carolina only one timeout remaining. South Carolina, their schedule upcoming looks like this. At UCF, and did they win tonight? Yeah, they beat Penn State tonight. I didn't mean to bring college. that up, partner. I'm sorry. And Kentucky at home, and then three road games in the SEC, Arkansas, Tennessee, Missouri. Right. And as we talked about last week, you know, the, the Georgia schedule, on paper anyway, a little bit more challenging, it looks like, than South Carolina's, particularly as you look who they play in the West. Georgia on the 28th has LSU coming into Athens, and that's a, that's a much more formidable task uh, than as you look at South Carolina's schedule right now. Sort of, a, sort of a weird twist, of course, South Carolina beating Georgia the last two years, but Georgia making it to the, the Dome in Atlanta as the SEC East champion. So this will at least help the Gamecocks keep, place, uh, keep pace, that is, with the idle Georgia Bulldogs. Georgia's off today. Fourth down and two with a minute to go. And slipping and going down is Wilds, and he got drilled Brandon by Wilds. Kenny Ladler, who's the leading tackler for Vanderbilt tonight. As we check in with Reese Davis, Vandy's going to get the ball back. Dave and Greece and Tom are sweating. We're not. It's beautiful yeah. tonight, but we've still got 55 seconds to play. Carter Samuels has got to come up slinging it now. He's not going to get a chance. Buried by Harris and Sutton. Mason Harris, you talk about fresh legs. He came off the edge with a burst. No way to stop it timeout-wise for Vanderbilt. Slant. Jordan Matthews trying to make something happen. He'll be short of the first down, and they're going to have to hustle. Yeah, Got to go. Got to get the first down. You know, you, right here on third down, the clock will stop a little bit if you can convert the first down. Not a hurry. Under 20 seconds. Carter Samuels in the backfield, running for his life and throwing on the run, incomplete. It's fourth down, and there's 11 seconds left. Well, it turned into a good football game. But the Commodores are going to go home one and two. And South Carolina, with Georgia being idle, will have a tie for the second longest home winning streak right now. It'll be 13 straight here at williams Bryce Stadium for the Gamecocks. There's that other team in the East that hasn't even played a conference game yet, the Florida Gators, outstanding defensive football team. Offense had a few problems in their loss to Miami a week ago. Carter Samuels, time might run out by the time he completes this play and ball to Matthews. It'll add to his stats, but it's not going to add to the scoreboard. 